Hello, welcome back. In this episode, we'll be adding some code to our pickup blueprint. Because in the last episode, we just imported all the meshes and the textures, created the materials, and created a basic template for our pickup. So, let's get started. Okay, so the pickup's going to work by the player interacting with this collision boundary and picking up whatever pickup is inside, meaning we will have multiple types of pickups. And we want this template to be able to be used for each type so that we don't have to make different ones individually. So we're going to create an enumeration. So that's blueprints, enumeration, and we're going to call this pickup type. In here we'll add some types such as health pickup, ammo pickup and we'll go for a double points pickup when we add in a point system. So now we have three to choose from we can have multiple variations of this so we need to have a new variable pickup type and we'll set this to be global which is just selecting that eye so it's open and we'll search for our newly created pickup type enumeration. The reason we're going to have this global is so that when we set it in the world like we have this one, you can see we can now choose any of these values. So we can actually change it on the fly without having to change any code. So we're going to program this for all of them from this very start. So we're going to want to set this up, so we're going to create a new function called setup. We're going to check what type it is and get the static mesh we need, then create material instances. So we're going to need another variable named g static mesh. And this is going to be a static mesh type and the g stands for global, so this can be used anywhere. And we're going to also want a material instance. So we'll just call this dynamic material, or we can just actually call this material inst. And we'll look for our material instance and compile. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use something called a switch. And we're going to switch on our enumeration, which is pickup type. And what this means is that whatever the value of this pickup type material, a pickup type variable that we have, which I'm plugging into selection, whatever this value is, we will do a separate code for it. So it's sort of like an if statement, but checking the value of our enumerator. So if we have this set to health, then whatever we do off health will be the code that it runs. So if it is on health, like it will be for now, we will set our static mesh to health pickup because the base is always going to be used. We're only changing the static mesh of the pickup. And we can actually set this now to none. So it starts at none. So on setup, we set the static mesh. We will set our pickup mesh to this new one, which will include the materials. And that's what we will do for ammo and double points. And then after we've set up that static mesh, we will then get the material instance by creating one from our pickup base. So left click pickup base and choose search for create dynamic material instance pickup base. The return value is our new material instance and the source material will be the pickup base get material element index zero. So we can delete that reference and just use this one. And we'll move this further out so we can make that a bit neater. And then we will set our pickup base material. I'll just get a new reference here to make it clean to this dynamic instance and click compile. So as you might see, when we click play, nothing turns up just yet, but that's because we've not actually told it to set up. So on event begin play, we call our setup function, and now we have our health cross material, and everything is all ready. So next we'll actually create the ability to restore player health. 
and that will be done in the player health class. So we'll create a new function called restore health, which will take in three inputs. It will take in our player's current health, it will take in our player's max health, and it will also take in the restore amount of health. So I'm going to do restore amount and then max health last. And this is going to be a simple integer add integer for current health and restore amount. And we're going to use a local variable called health to store this. And we'll do this from the start. So we'll set health to equal the addition of those two. We will then check if health is less than our maximum health. If it is, then we will output the new health value as our return node. And we will get the health value. If it isn't, then we need to set health equal to, oh, I just pulled the entire thing, max health. Because we don't want the value of the player's health to go over the max health. And then we will just call our return node. Now we need to add this to our library so we can call it from anywhere. So we'll call it restore player health, which will cast to our first person character getting our player character as our object reference we can then call restore player health player health library so that's our class so we'll just bring this up and as first person character we can get player health we can call the actual library that we've already made here and use that to get our current health and our max health, the restore amount will actually be an input. And then we will set player health. So we will set health equal to the new health value. Now that's a bit messy, so I'm just going to get my health as we've already called to it now. So we can get health and get max health and really that's probably a more optimized way, otherwise we'll be calling another function which will recast to the character which is just a bit inefficient when we've already cast to it once. So now in our pickup on box collision, go down to the bottom and click on component begin overlap. And what we're going to do is check if it's our player and then get the player health. To do that, we'll just go to our first person character blueprints and on first person character self class at the top, search for tag, add a new one and call it player. And that means all of that is associated with being a player. So on our pickup, we can check if the other actor has the tag player using a branch statement, which is hold B and left click. So if it's true, we'll activate another switch statement. So we'll do switch on pickup type. Again, using pickup type. And on health, we will restore health. And we'll do this in a function. So we'll restore health using a local variable of amount to restore. And we're going to use that as a local variable because it doesn't need to be a global one. We can just keep it in this function and set it when needed. So I'm going to set this to 40 because that's the amount of damage our enemy does. So it's just going to restore one attack, one enemy attack's worth of health. So on restore health, we want to 
just restore the player's health. So we will restore health, play a library, restore amount will be amount to restore, and then on event graph we will call restore health on health, compile and play, and now when our enemy damages us and we go over this, we return back to full health. Now as you can see, if I do that again, when we do that and restore back to full health, the health pickup actually stays there for everybody else to still use. So in the next video we'll fix that by deactivating the power up when we've picked it up and giving it a amount of time it has to wait before respawning and we'll also add some visually aesthetic things to it. So I hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, a dislike if you didn't. If you're opinion to otherwise, have any comments, questions, suggestions, or advice, just leave it in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And as always, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks guys. Bye.